Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. It is Monday evening, November 18th, 2019. And I'm back with another video. I went cast iron treasure hunting this weekend with my mom. We decided to strike out and head for a different area um, that we usually do not go to. And if you're like me, your creature's a habit, you tend to do the same thing over and over again. At least I do. And sometimes you don't always find new things. So it kind of started with the summertime. We tried Erie PA. Ironically, I thought that was Griswold country and the only Griswolds I found there were very expensive. So I didn't come home with a Griswold, but I did make a couple sales from my venture out there, or actually at least, yeah, I think one, at least one. And, uh, but anyway, the reason why I had to go back on a treasure hunt, I had nothing to restore until I bought these in front of you, and I also sold five over the last week. All of a sudden, I've been selling a ton of cast iron. So if you want to hang on a minute, let me go to my computer screen. I'll share with you what I've done, then I'll come back and shed the mystery on what I have here. So I will be right back. Okay, guys, I am back, and what you're looking at is one of my eBay listings that sold. This is the Griswold that I just picked up on October 29th when I was passing through that area on the way back from sourcing at the bins with my uh, fellow uh, local eBay meetup group. Uh, but this is a uh, the number three Griswold Erie PA small logo, 709H, and you know, they're not worth a ton. I think I paid $8 for the skillet. And I put it up for $34.99, and I did take an offer. It did not sell for that. But before I explain you guys that, I'll tell you why I didn't take, or why I didn't counter with the guy. So I will be right back. I'll show you the other skillet here that he did purchase from me. He bought this one, which is a number eight, three-notch lodge, which I bought right around Labor Day. Mom and I went to um, an area of the state that's kind of touristy. There's a lot of antique shops and malls. But we did find this one. And it was uh, this particular shop was run by the Amish in the area. This is a three-notch lodge. You remember me doing it on the video. I can link a video above when I first got that. And it sold for my full asking price of $64.99 plus shipping. So that was a very nice profit. I think I paid $15 for the skillet, and it just uh, worked out real well. And because, he, you know, he saw this one first, he paid full price. And then he came back and made an offer on this one that was a little bit under 30 But because he paid full price for my other skillet, I went ahead and just accepted the offer and let him have the skillet. Um, you know, I could have countered with him, but I thought, you know what? I would rather just let it go this way. You, you never, you just, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to stroke the bear, so to speak. <laughs> but anyways, this one sold. I still made a nice profit on it. It was very easy to clean up, and there we be. Now the the other thing I bought, I bought a Dutch oven Griswold a couple um, uh, weeks ago as well, and that one, not there. Here it is here, and I restored it. And this was a different site. I list more, on more than one site. But ironically, I put it up, I think, on November 13th, and the thing sold on November 13th in two days. It sold for my full asking price of $79.19 plus shipping. On this site is actually, I, you know, they have slower traffic on this site, but I make nice sales on this site when they come up. And they don't, the fees aren't nearly as high as eBay, so I do like to go to other sites. And you just spread your things out, and they'll be seen by more people. But this was a nice Dutch oven. I could have kept it, but I already have one. And there's only so much room for all this cast iron. So if I have what I need, then I will gratefully sell anything else that I do. I love restoring it, and if somebody else can appreciate it, and pay current market value for it, why not? So this one was a nice sale, it sold. And then we have, um, let me go back, not that one. Let's go and show you the next one. Uh, let me see, this one here. This one is an unmarked number eight Wagner Ware, and this is the one that had a ghost mark. Now, I can't show you the ghost mark here because this is a picture of the listing. This just sold a couple of days ago. Actually, I think it sold Saturday, Friday night or Saturday morning, 
early in the morning. Sold for my full asking price of $49.99 plus shipping. And this one here uh, was intriguing because you don't find too many like this. Uh, this had, I don't know if you can see it here with the picture, but this one had really nice mill milling marks and circular pattern on the pan. And somebody had commented on one of my videos that that was just somebody's grinding. Somebody had ground that on their own. But I did some research, and that's not exactly accurate. Uh, Wagner offered three different polishes on their pans, even on their unmarked ones. And the unmarked ones were made for department stores and just different outlets like that where they didn't want to actually put their name on the line, but it was the same skillet. But they offered a smooth finish, they offered a, um, a glossy finish, and then they offered what they call a polish grinding finish. And that's what this is, where it's circular motion, and everything is perfectly even and professionally done. That's what this skillet had, and it also had a ghost mark, a little bit of a W from the Wagner on the back, and that's what made it intriguing, intriguing for the buyer. So let's hope the buyer likes the skillet. But that sold nicely as well. And then finally, I sold my waffle iron that I first got in Erie, PA. Uh, didn't sell for $175, but I took a, an offer about $10 less than that because I offered free shipping. But I can ship it with, um, I get commercial discounts from the site that I use. So I still made about $70 or $80 bucks on this. I bought it for $59. I restored it. And I actually used it a couple times, you guys saw in the videos. But when I found my Griswold, I decided to sell this one. And uh, so it went bye-bye as well. Now I want to show you what I picked up, but I wanted to show you these because I need to get some more stuff seasoned so I can either decide if I'm going to keep it or sell it. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back again. These three skills were purchased, like I said, Saturday at uh, antique malls that aren't too far from where I am, which is good. The first one is a, if you can see there, it's a number six, and it's got well-developed pour spouts. And we will go ahead and turn it over. And it is, you can barely see it, but it is a Wagner Ware Sydney O. And I believe it, it, there's a model number there, but we really can't see it. But it had really, really doesn't spin. There's not much wobble. And I held it up for the ring test. And I don't have a tripod right now, but it rings as clear as a bell. So I'm going to put the camera down. And you can hear it. You can kind of hear it. There are no cracks on it. So there is a Wagner Ware number six. That size is not as common. So, and I do have one, but it is a little bit of a spinner. This one is not. You push the handle, it does not spin. And I paid, this one I paid $15 for in an antique mall. So that was pretty good. The guy cut me a deal. Then I went down the street to a companion mall owned by the same guy. And this one is, has some rust on it. But as you can see, I paid $9.60. It has some rust, but if you look at real close, it's just, I don't believe it caused any pitting. Uh, there are no cracks. It rings like a bell when you, when you wrap on it. And you turn it over. It's a number seven. Again, that's an uncommon size. It has an outside heat ring. I can't see any markings of any kind on the skillet. I don't know if there are any. There are any or not until I put it in a lye bath. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing the video now. But... You know, this it feels pretty smooth once all this stuff comes off. But an outside heat ring indicates an earlier skillet. I don't think this is an Erie. Doesn't it doesn't look like a Volrath. To me, it looks like a very early Wagner because the ribbing stops. It flattens out going into the sidewall. And it has a perfect teardrop here. The pour spouts are very, very well defined here. And if you go over to this Wagner pan, the same thing, this marked Wagner pan, you can see it here. So I'm not sure on this one, but I want to get it into lie and get going on it so we can find out what the mystery is. And then finally, uh, this one here is a number eight. It has well-defined pour spouts. 
You come down here, here's a teardrop handle, and here is a, it's a number eight. And it too is flat. I mean, let's go ahead and show you. Let's backtrack a little bit on this uh, one with the heat ring. Boy, that rust looks bad, doesn't it? But I paid $9.60. Doesn't have any major problems. I think I can get rid of that. So we've got to get it into lye and then into vinegar. This one here also is flat. And that's one reason I wanted to. You push the handle, it doesn't spin. There's very little wobble. It sits pretty, pretty dang on flat. So we'll put that over there. This one turned out to be a small logo, Griswold. Not quite as collectible as a large logo, but a number eight is a larger size pan. It's very smooth, even with the uh, old seasoning on. Very smooth. The cooking surface is fairly smooth as well. You just got to get this stuff off. And it is a 704Y. And it too has a little bit more definitive ribbing here, but it does kind of flatten out like the Wagners do. So um, I don't know if this is an unmarked Griswold or, or Erie, or but it's neither an Erie, Griswold, or Wagner. And then this one here, um, I was able to pick up for 25 bucks. Uh, they had it marked at 38, and I said, "What could he do?" I wanted to buy the other skillet, and he said, "I'll give them both both to you for 40 bucks." And I said, "Hey, you got yourself a deal." And uh, this is great. I'm going to go ahead and restore this as well. Small logo, Griswold. Now, one of my favorite skillets I didn't sell because it has, has built up carbon on it that I can't remove. Uh, it's kind of on the underside. It's not in the cooking surface. But it's my number seven, small logo, Griswold. And I'm telling you, that pan is just the best when it comes for omelets and eggs. Even even beats the black lock over there. Yep, it's my number seven, Griswold, small logo. So uh, these pans are fantastic. They're just the right thickness. So I wanted to show you what I had. I wanted to get up, get some more things going. Um, I'm totally out of things to restore until I put these in into lye and get them soaking. And anyway, I, I will be back when I have these things stripped so you can see what they are. And then I will show you what it looks like when I'm all done. So... Yep, but if you do it right, uh, this stuff it can be sold, it can be used uh, indefinitely, as long as you take care of it. So anyway, uh, please leave a question or comment below. Uh, give me a thumb up if you'd like to see more videos like this, and I will be more than happy to show them to you. I appreciate you watching. Thanks, and go make it a great day.